Hey guys, it's me again. I do hope everyone's well. The books I'm going to share with you in this video we got from Book Excess. They are the parent company of the Big Bad Wolf Book Caravan. They are headquartered in Malaysia and I will be leaving their link to um, the description box below. We figured out that we won't be having the Big Bad Wolf this year because of the virus and so we decided to order some books from their website instead. I read from an article that they won't be having any BBW sales this year, um, of course because of COVID-19, which is definitely very sad if you look at it at a business perspective because these events accounted for 95% of the company's revenue or total sales. But I also read that they've been working on their e-commerce platform, so I'm cheering them on. So this is our first time to order straight from them. And since they offer 50% to 80% lower than the book suggested retail prices um, because they're remaindered or overstock books i went a little bit crazy and ordered a lot actually a box full of books and most of them are of course classics i do however have to mention that although the books are very very cheap uh, just like um, the usual Big Bad Wolf prices, the shipping fee from Malaysia to the Philippines is another story. Um, the actual amount or the total amount of my books actually equaled to uh, my shipping fee. So I suggest if you plan on buying from them you do it with some friends so that you can share the shipping costs i will be talking about eight books in this video and the rest will be featured by installments so let's get to the first book i want to start with the book that i am most excited about it's Mihail Bulgakov's The Master and Margarita. So I got the Picador edition and although I already have a copy of this title in the Alma Classics edition, which I got from Fully Booked and which I want to start with because of its translation. This is by Hugh Applin. And let me see who translated this. Hmm. This is, um, it's actually not mentioned here um, who translated this, this work. But when I saw this cover, I knew that I would love to have this cat in my shelf. Here's a quick look of this sassy black cat. I've already mentioned this ad nauseum um, in my other videos but I'm on a mission to explore Russian classics and I want the Master and Margarita to be my introductory piece to the genre. I love the Lord and I believe I'm a very spiritual person, but um, Satan really fascinates me as a book character. He was definitely very fun. 
um, in The Good Omens by Neil Gaiman and Damned um, by Chuck Palahniuk. Um, and so I tried to Google um, some of the novels that feature him and this came up. I don't know how big his part is here in the story but I know it will be very fun again. So I read this article by LitHub yesterday and it mentioned that out of all the Russian classics, The Master and Margarita is the most cheering. It encourages you to not take yourself too seriously, no matter how things have, um, no matter how bad things have gotten. You have to laugh, otherwise you'd cry. So definitely a lovely reminder, right? I like to get into this blind, except for a few things, that this book features the devil, true love, and a gun-toting cat. This was written in the 1930s, in the darkest days of the Soviet Union, under um, Stalin's rule. And this became an underground sensation after it was first published in 1960s, long after Bulgakov's death. Next, I got to pick um, The Hound of the Baskervilles by Arthur Conan Doyle in this lovely Penguin English Library edition. I've been collecting the PEL editions and so this is a treat for me. I really love the moth pattern in this. This is considered as the best loved classic case of Sherlock Holmes and Dr. Watson. And so if you haven't read any Sherlock Holmes novel yet, then this might be a very good place to start. This is the third of the four crime novels written by Doyle, which features Sherlock Holmes. The other three being the first one, um, The Adventures of Sherlock Holmes. Second is The Memoirs of Sherlock Holmes. And then this is the third one. And the fourth one being The Return of Sherlock Holmes. The story has a gothic setting, so if you're into the gothic literature, then you can add this up to your list. On the screen is how the first edition cover looked like in 1902. Next, we have Oliver Twist by Charles Dickens. And I got the Vintage Classics Library Edition, which features this very cute bull terrier. And I know that I'm really the target audience for this cover design. Just so you know, um, this doesn't have the usual vintage red spine. 
um, which is quite important as well for um, those who collect the vintage red spines. So um, I just want to point that out. If you have a Dickens book at home, um, know that you have in your shelf the work of a writer who is regarded by many as the greatest novelist of the Victorian era. Oliver Twist, or The Parish Boy's Progress, is Dickens' second novel and was published in book form in 1838 after being a serial um, in 1837 and lasted until 1839. So this was written um, after the Pickwick Papers and um, was followed by Nicholas Nickleby. So this is an early example of a social novel because the story features themes such as child labor and the recruitment of young children as criminals. So the story is about Oliver um, an orphan who finds himself um, taken in by a group of thieves and pickpockets and live his life in the dark criminal underworld of Victorian London. So Oliver Twist also features some of the most memorable characters written by Dickens and this also has a gothic love story and so this is a treat for me and for at events. This particular edition um, has illustrations inside so let me show you. Mm. Okay, so this one. Another one. also got this Knickerbocker Classics Edition of Oliver Twist because my partner thinks it looks cute and is intrigued by this collection. It features a cloth-bound soft cover and this elastic band which makes it look like a journal. Here's a quick look of some of the titles under this collection. The next three books that I'm going to show to you are from the Legend Press Classics. Um, they are a UK-based publishing house and it's my first time to see their books and I'm in love with their covers.
Just a quick look of the other titles available in this collection, just so you'll see how beautiful and inspiring these covers are. I picked Frances Burnett's The Secret Garden because look at this cover. The moment I saw this cover, I knew it was time for me to get my own copy of this novel. I grew up watching Mary and the Secret Garden. Um, this is in the 90s. And it's because of this animation that it has become my lifelong goal to have a rose garden. For those who are not familiar with the story, it's about an orphan named Mary who is left to explore a gothic mansion and discovers this mysterious walled garden um, of which has been locked for over a decade. This was first published in book form in 1911 and is considered as a classic of English children's literature. The book's original title is actually Mistress Mary, which is a reference to the English rhyme, Mary Mary, quite contrary. Frances Burnett, who wrote this, also wrote A Little Princess. Um, if you're a Filipino and grew up in the 90s, remember Princess Sara? Sara ang munting princesa? Ang na! <laughs> Mas maganda ang damit niya! Mas maganda nga talaga ang damit niya kaysa kay labi niya! Bakit hindi mo kinokopy ang sinusulat ko? Maraming salamat na lang po, Miss Minchin. Hindi ko po kailangan yan. Um, let me know in the comments if you loved the... TV series or the movie starring Camille Prats and Angelica Panganiban. Another beautiful cover by Legend Press Classics is the gothic no novella um, The Strange Case of Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde by the Scottish writer Robert Louis Stevenson. The concept of the duality of the self was widely popular in 19th century. Some of the popular works which explore this theme include Fyodor Dostoevsky's The Double, um, Mary Shelley's Frankenstein, Oscar Wilde's The Picture of Dorian Gray, and two of H.G. Wells' novels, um, The Island of Dr. Moreau and the Invisible Man. On the screen is the title page of the first London edition published in 1st title for this video, I picked up Lewis Carroll's Alice Adventures in Wonderland. 
this came out in 1865, three years after Lewis Carroll, whose real name is Charles Lutwidge Dodgson, um, had a boat ride with a friend and three little girls. That boat ride was known as the Golden Afternoon, for that was the time when the idea of Alice in Wonderland came to him. On the screen, you will see. On the screen, you will see how the cover of the original edition in 1865 looked like. I still haven't read Alice in Wonderland, even though I consider it my favorite fantasy adventure novel. I, however, have seen a lot of adaptations, both animation and film. I love the Tim Burton adaptation and of course, the 1951 Disney film um, which is also the first adaptation I've ever seen. I have yet to watch the 1903 version, which is considered as the first film adaptation of Alice. It's just an eight minute silent film and is readily available here in YouTube. I will be leaving a link of it in the description box in case you want to watch it. If you want to watch a very dark, really weird, Alice in Wonderland-like film, check out the 1975 movie Black Moon by the French director Louis Mal. It's one of the weirdest movies I've ever seen. Among all of these adaptations I have seen, my favorite was the 1999 TV adaptation which stars Tina Mahorino as Alice and Whoopi Goldberg as the Cheshire Cat. Artie's wooden leg, Artie's wooden leg, we'll paint it red, call it Fred or Ned or Ted. Let me know in the comments if you have seen this um, TV version in the 90s. And lastly, I picked up another Alice in Wonderland book, and this is um, the Rockport edition um, in their Classics Reimagined series. Um, look at this. The books under the series are unabridged and are illustrated by contemporary artists from around the world. So for example, in um, this book, this is illustrated by Andrea de Aquino. Some of the titles available in the series are shown on screen. Before I end this video, I have to point out that since these are remaindered copies, um, these books won't come perfectly. Um, for example, with this book, um, 
the edges are faded and with my secret garden um you see that there are um, creases on the cover last last reminder um the shipping costs from malaysia to the philippines could equal the total amount of your books so um, it's better if you have someone to share the shipping costs with so that's it for this video um thank you so much for listening to me talk about books and films as well um, I do hope to see you again next time. Bye! So this is our first...